Greetings all, Last Outrider here with another 40K video. This time we're talking about 40K after the Horus Heresy. And if you're wondering, why am I not wearing my hat? It's because this is my contribution to Westworld Season 3. If you don't know Westworld or Season 3, go find out. Anyways, back on to 40K. <clears throat> Some of you may know that the purpose of the one of the purpose of the Horus Heresy series was to canonize or solidify the 40K universe. Some people didn't like this, like Andy Chambers. They wanted the 40K world to be more vague, to be left up to players, to decide for themselves in their own 40K worlds what the answers to some questions were. Games Workshop got rid of this and wanted to finalize and create a fixed 40K world. So, the problem with this is that beforehand there was no way to have an inconsistency in 40K because things were deliberately left vague. Now that the Horus Heresy is complete, things that haven't been explained become plot holes instead of just things left up for you to decide on your own. We're going to be talking about two of them in these videos, two of them that bother me the most. The first one is going to be the Thousand Suns and the Destruction of Prospero. In the two novels, A Thousand Signs and Prospero Burns, by Dan Abnett, which does not explain why the Prospero was destroyed, uh, or Russ's thinking behind it, and now that the Horus Heresy series is done, none of the other books afterwards explain it either. So I have officially labeled it a plot hole. Now, either Games Workshop knows about this and simply has not found a way to explain it, or doesn't know, which I doubt. What is the plot hole? Basically, Prospero was one of the crowning jewels of the Imperium. Okay? It was the epitome of what could be achieved by following the Imperial Creed. Okay, one of rational, scientific achievement. It was unique in that this was a Legion homeworld that was also a center of education. It was designated a pleasure planet. It was basically a utopia in the Imperium. And it was an Astartes recruiting world at the same time, making it unique amongst all Astartes recruiting worlds that I am aware of. And yet it was bombed into oblivion. Why? There was not a military reason for this. There was not a order to do this, either by the Emperor or Malkador or the Custodes. There wasn't even really a dialogue in the book to explain why this took place. What was the thinking? What was the purpose behind doing it? Um, so, why is that? Now, if you go and look at my past video, which talks about Space Wolves, the Traitor Legion, uh, I explained that the reason why Lehman Rust does this and the Space Wolves go along with it is because they hate the Thousand Suns. They hate the Thousand Suns more than anybody because they are the exact opposite end of the spectrum of the Space Wolves. They are everything that the Space Wolves are not or appear not to be, if you ask them. They are educated. They are erudite. They are civilized. Right? 
if the space wolves are on the low end of the civilized spectrum being just unrepentant savages, the Thousand Suns were the epitome of warrior king philosophers. Each one a scholar, aside from being an Astarte. And on top of that, even though it's not mentioned very often, the only legion that Russ could not defeat, the, the Space Wolves could not defeat. And they couldn't even take Prospero, except for the fact that Magnus didn't take part in the conflict. Uh, they needed the Sisters of Silence to support them. And the Custodes came, came along with them. If they didn't have those three things boosting their military capabilities, they would have lost. So, what was the point of destroying Prospero? It's never really explained. This was supposed to be bring Magnus back for cincture, which again doesn't really make sense because Magnus was already on Terra talking to the Emperor, so why did they need to bring his body back after he'd already talked to the Emperor? I don't know. It's not explained. That's what the purpose of the books was supposed to be doing, explaining something that happened in the Horus Heresy. It didn't do it. Now, maybe it's just because Games Workshop doesn't edit Dan Abnett's books that closely. They certainly didn't edit uh, that Space Marine, and I use the term lightly, movie uh, script that came out. So somehow this slipped through the cracks, and it's not explained. That's the small one. The bigger one, and this is what's going to make this video go a little longer, is the warp. <laughs> the warp is probably the most important aspect of 40K, and it is not properly explained. And I'm not talking about life in the warp or chaos being properly explained. Of course, you're not going to explain that in detail. I'm talking about the Imperium's relationship to the warp, i.e. imperial technology and how the Imperium accesses the warp. Specifically, we know that there are two components to warp travel. One we know about pretty well. That's the Geller field. This is the technology that protects Imperial ships as it travels through the warp, creating a kind of bubble of reality in the warp. What's not explained is the actual warp drive. See what I mean? What is the actual drive that propels ships, one, from the material realm into the warp and then from the warp back into the material realm and then through the warp as it goes through it. This is almost not talked about at all. It has to be a very common technology considering how many warp capable ships there are. I mean they build them all the time so this isn't a rarity by any stretch. So how does that work? And I don't mean the technical specifications. I'm talking about every time the books mention opening a gateway to the warp, it is a harrowing adventure. It is some earth-shattering artifact. Uh, they call them hell gates or hell mouths or, you know, when... when the word bearers made their athmes to cut through reality and get into the warp. It was always this incredible artifact that's passing between our world and the warp. It's supposed to take an incredible amount of arcane knowledge and 
power and understanding in order to pierce the realm from our realm into the warp. It's never thought of to be easy. Um, Horus had to go and travel to Moloch specifically to find this opening to the warp. Okay, I understand that, but that seems to run contrary to the entire concept of warp travel. How does that happen? Well, they open a gateway to the warp, and ships pass into it, then they open a gateway back to the material world, and they pass out. Whoa! I thought that was supposed to be an incredibly complex process that was so arcane and difficult to do. Oh, we do it every time we warp travel, and we don't do it on a small scale. We do it large enough that this kilometers long ship is able to just jump in and jump out whenever we want. That's a huge tear in the warp. And not only does it happen once at a time, you can have hundreds of ships popping back out of the tear, uh, just opening warp gateways wherever they want, whenever they want. So, obviously, we must have the ability and a common technology that tears huge gaping holes into the warp at will and then tears huge gaping holes back into the material world at will and bubbles of reality that we can wrap around ourselves that keep the warp at bay as we travel through it somehow unknown means of propulsion and navigators that are capable of comprehending that dimension without psychics, with an actual biological methodology, a third eye that biologically is able to comprehend the warp, not psychically, because it's a mutation. That means it's in their DNA. That means it's not a psychic power. So how does, how does that work? How do these two versions of the warp fit together. One, it's incredibly difficult to open a gateway to the warp. The other, they do it all the time just for fun. I don't know. They haven't explained it, and that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to clarify the 40k universe. Before, they didn't need to explain it because it's a mystery. It's up to you to figure it out. Now, it's a cornerstone of their canon universe, which hasn't been explained. Let's look at um, the, the, the Geller field, which really bothers me now. I'm going to put my hat on because I like it. Thank you. The Geller field. This is a technology, technology, a common technology, that creates a reality bubble that can protect a ship in the warp. Now, I read all of these books where demons are punching their way through into the material world. Look at... Long story short, if we can create a Geller field on the size of Imperial warships, on the size of Imperial space stations, why can't we create personal ones? Why do we need the Sisters of Silence, pariahs at all. We seem to have perfected anti-warp technology, right? Why can't I carry around a little pocket Geller field? Oh, look, there's a breach in the warp. There's a demon incursion. No problem. Here, they just turned on my Geller field. Now they can't. I just created my reality bubble around me. Demons can't get near me. Why not? That, that's precisely what they do. That is exactly what their function is in the warp. So why, why can't we use this on a personal scale? And if it, if it isn't a personal scale, why can't we unis, use this on a planetary basis? Oh, here's a fort. Blurp. Gellerfield. No demon invasions here. In fact, that's precisely what they did with the Grey Knights and the... Um, 
the Primaris Space Marines. They literally transferred these facilities into the warp with Geller fields and were able to create legions of space marines there over a period of 10,000 years. So obviously this Geller field and warp travel and warp rifts appear only when needed. When it's common and serves the storyline, we can protect ourselves from the warp and tear open the warp with a snap of the fingers. But when it wants to be an epic journey, then it requires the anathema and chipping off the anathema to create these 12 special atmes that can cut open the warp and people can travel through it then is supposed to be an incredibly esoteric process. Which is it, Games Workshop? You want to turn this into canon, so you're going to have to pretty much determine what is humanity's relationship with the warp. And right now, it seems pretty schizophrenic. That is your food for thought. Maybe people want to share their ideas about that or check out Westworld Season 3. Until next time, bye.